right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to um, this panel, which uh, I think may uh, develop a few sparks as we go along here, if, uh, if we're, I've got my thinking cap on right here. I want to thank Terry for inviting me. This is my first World Policy Conference, so I want to thank him for inviting to what has been a very interesting experience. We heard a lot of uh, interesting remarks all the way along the line, and um, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for this panel on the consequences of Trump. Let's see how far we can get before we get as divided as the American political scene is these days. Um, and um, I, you know, it seems uh, from the first few days here at, uh, at Marrakesh that uh, we've been talking around a subject that we're now going to talk about directly. It's the, the elephant in the room. Uh, and when I say elephant, uh, I mean, anyone? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you got it, Virginia. It's uh, Donald Trump, and I didn't have to say it. Um, he's always been sort of the orange-haired specter behind uh, each one of these uh, panels. We hear the, the impact he's having around the world, and so I think this morning it'll be interesting for us to see if we can analyze that impact a little bit. As I reflected on the subject, I thought, well, maybe sh I should look at this sort of geographically. You know, um, when you look at it in a geographic frame, where has Trump had some kind of impact? What, where are there some consequences of his three-year-old presidency? Well, it's just like everywhere. Chinese trade war, decoupling, uh, India, the way that the Modi was encouraged to go after uh, Kashmir. Uh, in Syria, what we see we're witnessing happening right now uh, in Syria um, and putting American armed forces uh, in jeopardy along the way uh, with Iran, the JCPOA, uh, Saudi Arabia, more weapons and, and uh, American soldiers on their way, American mercenaries maybe I should say on their way, um, Israel, the way Netanyahu has been inspired and Trump's son-in-law has come up with a rather one-sided Middle East peace pro uh, plan. Um, in Europe, the encouragement for Brexit um, in Europe, the way you discourage NATO uh, in Europe, the encouragement of populism. So everywhere you look, and you, go, you include South America for that, you know, Mexico and Canada, uh, NAFTA, Japan and the threats of tariffs, North Korea, South Korea, you know, you name it, everywhere you look, uh, there's something, there's been some effect from Trump. Uh, as Thierry uh, mentioned at the, in his opening remarks here, you see the shadow of the White House everywhere. So we have panelists from everywhere who I think uh, will be able to let us know about what they see as some of the consequences of Trump. Um, we have Renaud Girard, who is the esteemed senior reporter and a war correspondent for Le Figaro in Paris, my colleague. Uh, Modo Shigo Ito, who uh, Modo is... is uh, uh, on the uh, Japanese uh, Council on Economic and Fiscal Policy, and he is uh, known well in Japan as the father of Abenomics. We have, uh, next is uh, Jean-Claude Gouffa, who's my colleague on the American Hospital Board in Paris, and uh, he described himself the other day as a French banker in the United States and an American banker in France, who does both. Um, uh, Joseph Joffe from uh, Die Zeit, uh, the publisher and editor of the Zeit. Um, and who else? Uh, we've got um, uh, Lin Chao, uh, Lin being the um, uh, uh, Chinese representative here on the panel. Uh, he is the vice chairman and secretary general of the Shanghai Development Research Foundation, which is an independent Chinese think tank. And finally, at the end, last but not least, John Sawyer, who is uh, uh, and on the uh, Newbridge Advisory Council, he's the executive chairman of the uh, Newbridge Ad Ad uh, Advisory Council, and a senior advisor at Chatham House, and more importantly, perhaps, he's the former uh, head of intelligence, British intelligence, MI6. So uh, we have a pretty complete panel, and we decided at lunch yesterday, we had such an interesting lunch, we were so taken with our lunchtime conversation that we decided we would try to keep up the, our brilliant remarks for you today and kind of approach this panel somewhat differently. So I have asked each of our panelists to summarize in three words the first three years of Trump 
uh, what their impressions are, what they would say, how would they react in just three words. So, Renaud, your three words, please. Uh, en trois mots seulement, uh, après trois ans de Trump, quelles conséquences on a sur le monde Eh bien, on a un rapprochement uh, inouï entre la Russie et la Chine. OK. Moto. Yeah, I just like to just emphasize only one thing uh, about what I call the globalization dilemma, tri trilemma. I mean, the globalization and democracy and uh, sovereign, national sovereignty. That three are very much related and may maybe very convenient way to look at what happened now. Okay, strong clock. Uh, Jim, I give you two versions. You pick the one you want. The <laughs> first one is uh, unpredictable, erratic, versatile. That's the individual. Mm -hmm. And then on the policy side, a c very consequential presidency. Very consequential presidency. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can explain that a little later on. Joseph. <coughs> in, <coughs> in French, plus ça change, meaning there's a lot more continuity, continuity between Trump and his predecessor, Obama, than meets the eye, and that will continue even if we have a democratic administration in 1921. Edward Shaw. Uh, three words I want to choose is the first one is ignorant in foreign trade and a global supply chain. Second is stubborn or you may call persistent. The last one is unpredictable. Unpredictable. Yeah. Okay. And John, the view from Britain. Uh, well, it's not so much a view from Britain, it's a view from <laughs> me, but it's. Um, uh, I think the first striking thing about Trump is his approach to business and his deregulating style. Uh, I think we should um, acknowledge that as a significant shift from his predecessors. So deregulating is the first. The second, and you've described it, uh, his approach to the world is disruptive. And the third, I think you have to say, is he's damaging. Damaging to the, the, the global public good. Mm -hmm. All in all, I would say kind of a negative assessment of the uh, Trump three years. There are a few maybe positives in there. I could see maybe a few positive signs, but uh, not particularly positive for Mr. Trump. I don't know how many Trump voters we have <coughs> on the panel. But uh, in any case, so let me just begin the discussion and feel free to jump in and disagree with each other. <laughs>